All right, it's been a while since I recorded. Last thing we were doing, we we're grinding down the stringers. We've made a little bit of progress since then. But first, take a little look at my workshop here behind. I have everything that I'd ever need. I have my fiberglass for tabbing. I have my chop strand mat. I got all my rollers and my buckets and my acetone. And I also have 10 more gallons of polyester resin because I kind of ran out of the four gallons I was working with before. So you can see I'm working on the fiberglassing right now. All the stringers are in there and set. They look a little weathered because the wood is a little weathered, but overall the wood is solid. There are a few mistakes that I have here where I'm going to have to grind out that bubble right there because I didn't have a nice enough radius. And I've already figured out a workaround for that. We'll get there when we get there though. But overall I'm happy with the progress. I had to take off basically the whole entire winter because work got real busy and I'd rather be making a little bit more money than making more time to work on the boat. Just kind of how I am. But now since it's spring and summer is fast approaching, I gotta make some progress on this boat, so let's get started. I'd like to reiterate for anyone who has not watched previous videos, I am by no means a professional boat builder. This is the first time I've ever done it. Don't take advice from me. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll tell you what I did. So I acetoned everything to make sure it was all clean where I was going to put the fiberglass and the resin. And I began laying my tabs. Some areas I did double tab, as you can see where the fuel tank is going to be. I basically just overlapped it a decent amount. So some areas has a little bit more tabbing than others. And then I made sure I tabbed all of the corners. And to save a little bit of time, I actually decided to dunk the fiberglass in the resin instead of try to roll the resin in. But I made sure I rolled out any excess resin, but just keep in mind this does waste resin all right it's the next day i actually ran out of the tabbing the six inch wide tabbing and i broke open the next for just two cuts of 47 inches you can see that right here but i had this whole entire thing laid out with fiberglass this morning and you can see some of that in the boat here whereas i've already laid quite a bit of it today you can well you can see it kind of uh no not in here but like over here i had to do some tabbing on the bulkheads this bulkhead and the next one i believe and then i had to do all of this out here and i ran out of uh, resin that i mixed up before i did that but i also had all of that done in this bay up here that is now tabbed in as well on, on both sides and then you can see i'm about to mix up some stuff and lay that fiberglass right there and then lay all of this we have the big stuff for the outer where actually I thought I was going to have to cut it to smaller size, but I don't know, it kind of works. We have the six inch tab for this part right here. And then we have some tabbing to do right here, right here, and the vertical parts, and as well as in that little bay uh, uh, piece right there. And then after that, what you saw kind of laid down in there is this right up here, that bulkhead, and then the front bulkhead, which is actually going to be a fish box. And many, many hours later, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can see how I have now tabbed up everything and encapsulated most of it in chop strand. I'm showing this right here because it's a little too, uh, a little too tall, but everything else is just about perfect. And you can see it all except for where the tank is, that bulkhead, and then the front fish box up there the inside of that so this whole entire inside and then the outside of the long stringers because i ran out of time you can also see i got some hardened hair over here from some crap i got in there that's not going to be fun uh -oh. anyway this is the remaining chop string mat that i have obviously a lot uh be able to use all of this for the deck and i have a few of the cuts already for the inside stringers so for where the gas tank is on the inside and for the fish box on the inside and i don't know if it's just me but this is what my gloves look like after messing with the chop strand use the roller roller actually looks pretty nice wait and that's that it's a little bit ugly in some areas like that area right there and basically everywhere else but it'll get the job done and i think it'll work just fine chop strand is all the way down i just got to do some grinding obviously in the bilge area and for areas that are built up like that unfortunately i didn't bring my camera or a tripod but looks like everything is just about perfectly level grind it properly just a little bit better if you ask me i was planning on originally going in and installing the pvc for the fish box drain that'll go under the fuel tank right there and then stick out, uh, probably stick out a little bit of PVC right there until right about here. But there was water in the boat, unfortunately. I guess 
Actually, I know exactly what it was from. We had a really hard rain last night, like yesterday evening. It was really hard for like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, but it was also very windy. So it probably just blew the wind. Which way was it windy? I don't know, one way or another, it must have blew the wind in and got in the boat, but I think everything should be fine. Now that I propped it up, everything drained out properly. I mean, you can kind of see it was parked there earlier. Anyway, so what I have to do, and eh, maybe I can do that now, is clean that out. Acetone it, which actually I'm out of acetone, but I really like to acetone that. And then I'll lay down the PVC. I'll peanut butter it to either side to ensure it has a good seal on either side, as well as a few areas of a 1708 maybe one right there one in the middle and one kind of on this side i don't need to cover the whole entire thing because it's pvc and i think that alone will be able to keep it in place so i was on my way to home depot to pick up an order that i placed for some pvc but i figured i'd stop by the farm to see if there's any pvc here and um yeah i think there are a couple of pieces that may work for me here <laughs> This is actually the PVC. Uh, I don't know why, but I decided to go with two inch for the drain, even though that's huge. But I have all these back from back at the, uh, it's a lot of extra PVC on a hog farm. So I was able to just get these. This is like 14 foot. So it can show you the other ones are like eh, nine, 10 foot. That actually may be longer than 14 foot. I don't know. And then I have these for the rigging tube. That is what the three inch PVC is for. And then these, so I can 45 it, 45 it to get that 90 degrees. So it's not just a really sharp turn for that PVC for the rigging. All right, I'm gonna try and do a better job of recording the stuff from here on out. I hope, I just need to remember a tripod or a camera so I can set it up and actually capture the action. But as you can see, I have the drain pipe, big two inch inner diameter drain pipe. This is, since this is a fish box, I believe I have it all nice and sealed off for any gaps. Try to have like a gradual taper from here to there. If I put insulation here, then okay, whatever. But I think this is good for right now and everything should be sealed. I put three strips of uh, 1708, one right there, one right in the middle, and then one all the way at the other side. And you can see I also did a uh, peanut butter over there and I had leftover peanut butter. I did peanut butter on the other side as well. I had leftover peanut butter and you can kind of see it down in there. I mean, I just kind of shoved it down in there. Not real pretty. I put a little bit along here, a little bit along there and the same thing over there just so there weren't any crazy wobbles in between the 1708 tape. The only thing about over here is that that is the bilge. This is a fuel tank area. And as of right now, if I properly sealed that side and that side, there is no way for condensation or water to get out of this area. So I'll probably drill a hole somewhere, uh, somewhere below here, you know, somewhere real low. I think I left a little bit of a gap underneath, but I'd still like to do a little bit more. Crap. But I'll do that once everything dries. Do it once everything dries and then I should be good. Also, let me show y'all something. As you can basically see that, I don't know if y'all can really tell, but this pipe right here, given the curve of the hole upwards, it's about level, if not perfectly level, I left my level at home, is right over there. Whereas my fuel tank, as you can see, it fits just in there with maybe an inch and a half on each side, and it is flat on the bottom. Therefore, fuel tank sits right here along that edge. Fuel tank sits along that edge. And then obviously the middle of the fuel tank sits along there. Three points of contact. I actually am really pleased with that. And if it's not exactly right, I'm getting quarter inch thick rubber. So I'll just stack two on top of each other. I'm gonna be using 5200 to paste it down and, and stick it up to the uh, fuel tank and that's how I decided to do it. I'm not going to do foam anymore. The main reason being is because you're not supposed to foam in an aluminum fuel tank because it can hold moisture and aluminum is water resistant. But if it has moisture held up against it, that's when it starts to break down. And that's when it starts to, you're going to have some problems. Yeah. And sorry for the lack of footage of the actual building process in this video. 
it was just a little bit too difficult to worry about the camera as well as all the fiberglass because they always had gloves on and I wasn't able to operate the camera or even, you know, set up the tripod and have to hit re-record it. You know, excuses, excuses, I know, I know. But <laughs> from here on out, there are going to be, there's going to be a lot more footage of the actual building process. I know it's been, I don't even know how many months since I last uploaded this build series, but I promise you it is very well underway. I've actually, eh, I don't want to give away too much, but I already have next week's video ready to roll and ready to upload. So it's going to be a bit more consistent from here on out. And I only say that to encourage you to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video and and so we can hit the goal my personal goal of a thousand subscribers this year in 2022.